Hey, I'm Thea from Supermetrics, and today I'm joined by one of our partners, Paul from Online Metrics. He's built a handy GS template to check that your GA4 setup is done correctly. Um, so Paul, could you start with sharing a little bit about yourself and Online Metrics? Yeah, sure. Thank you for the introduction, Thea. I'm Paul from Online Metrics. I'm in the analytics field for, let's say, roughly one to two decades now. And I primarily like help companies to get the data collection right. So I help them to implement uh, Google Analytics now G4, but also to ensure that the reporting is uh, in line, let's say, with what they uh, what they measure. So that that's my main uh, main thing. Like, and in addition to that, I really like to build tools to help people actually. Uh, be able to use analytics more efficiently. And um, one of the yeah, tools is something we are going uh, to talk about uh, today. And in addition, I share a lot on the internet about uh, the knowledge that I learned through working with clients so that people can really get the most out of uh, analytics. Super. And in my understanding, you've built an audit tool for universal analytics as well. But in this video, we'll focus on the GA4 audit tool. Could you walk us through what is a GA4 audit tool? Yes, sure. I will share my screen and at the same time, I will talk you through. So here, so here, we, um, here we go. So basically then uh, Google Analytics 4 audit tool is built to be able uh, to actually evaluate the data that you are collecting in Google Analytics 4. Because the, let's say, GA4 is very new, a lot of companies uh, face challenges with setting it up and getting the data properly into Google Analytics 4. Um, this audit tool has been designed like as the, let's say, next version of the audit tool. Universal Analytics, the tool was launched in 2017, so we are roughly six years later. And this tool will help you to see like whether your measurements are correct, whether you are um, actually uh, measuring the things that you should measure. So channel tracking is one important uh, part of it. Conversion tracking is very important. And also like we have e-commerce tracking as a specific, let's say, part of the order tool for companies that have implemented e-commerce. So this tool is a great one for e-commerce sites, but also like non-e-commerce sites. And uh, so it connects to Google Analytics via the Supermetrics integration that feeds the data into Google Sheets. And then there is an evaluation of 30 checks to give you a score from zero to 100. I haven't seen 100 yet, but if someone scores in the range of 80 to 100, you're doing a great job. If you are getting lower than that, there are a lot of areas probably to work on to improve your setup and to get better data to work with, to receive better insights through your data, and to be better able to get uh, out of your data what you like to get. So um, what I will do now is I will share how you can actually run this order tool if you have it on your site. So um, today, like I will use a little bit of a brief version because normally what you need to do is to go to the template gallery first. So you go to the template gallery, and there you can insert the link of the order tool, which you can get after seeing this uh, video. And then you insert it as a custom template. You select the GA4 property of your choice, and then it's going to run and actually pulls in your data from your GA4 property. And it evaluates your performance here in the form of 30 checks with a score. So now I'm going to show you how it looks like after you insert the template. So I've already done that. So this is really a refresh of data of an e-commerce website to show you how it goes. So I go to Supermetrics and I click on refresh all. So now the connection is made from Supermetrics to the API to a certain GA4 property, and it's refreshing the data. So it's refreshing the data from the last 30 days of the connected GA4 property. So the tool runs on roughly one month of data. So it's important to have already data collected before you run the tool, because otherwise there's no data to evaluate to give you a score. And as you can see, like um, 
there was a results column where they say like pass or fail. So if you have like a check and you've done it correctly in terms of setting things up, it gives a pass. If there is something wrong, it says fail. So this is an area of improvement. And this is basically like the scorecard template with 30 checks. If we look at the bottom from 21 to 30, these are very specific checks for an e-commerce website. So those are 10 in total. So on default, site type e-commerce is selected. In case you're running a non-e-commerce site, you can switch. So you can already see it took about one to two minutes to do the refresh. It's closing the window and all the evaluated checks are here. So a couple of more things are important for you to know. You can switch from e-commerce to no e-commerce. What you can see is that these fields will gray out and it calculates the score of 65 based on the remaining checks. So if you have an e-commerce site, it calculates it based on 30 checks, non-e-commerce, 20 checks. In addition to that, I like to give more feedback than only saying pause or fail, because you need to know what's really behind the check. How does it determine if you fail or pass? So that's why there are two more things here. One is the scorecard explanation tab. So in this particular tab, you can actually see like what is found in this GA4 property with a further explanation. So it says like failed, but also why it fits, because what it found. So to give you one example, like in Google Analytics, you can uh, set up your tracking, measuring, mediums, sources, campaigns, etc. So for example, you can uh, define the media. So if you have an incoming website sending traffic, it's named referral with the source, the name of the media. So if I get traffic to the website on supermetrics.com, like the medium is referral and the source will be supermetrics.com. So what we see here, for example, the percentage of mediums with total traffic share smaller than 1% equals 65% and fail. The reason why, just one check to, to tell you, is that um, if you have like a lot of different mediums defined with a uh, small traffic, it becomes like a very difficult thing to say like performance at a high level where you will get the most traffic from and which uh, mediums do convert the best. So in general, you want to keep the number of mediums relatively low. So that's why I have like um, a check on this so that you will have a good understanding of whether you've set up your campaign tracking in a correct way. So there are many, many related checks in terms of like channel tracking. And a lot of them are, as I mentioned, like focusing on e-commerce. If you run an e-commerce website, they uh, also go in depth in terms of feature setup, like side search, are you tracking it properly? Content grouping, did you set it up? Did you set up more than one conversion? And are you not only tracking the purchase, but also like micro conversions to get more contextual data on performance on your specific website? So many, many of these checks are here. In the last column of the scorecard explanation, you will find the further explanation. So it tells a bit more about why the check is important, why there's a potential fail or a pause. So this is like the basic information you can get in Google Sheets through these uh, two tabs. But in addition to that, there is a much more comprehensive article that I wrote uh, on my website where you can get all the background information that you need for this tool to be able to see like how uh, are you performing, performing and which areas need to be improved. So uh, without going through it all that, like here's the blog post, and as you can see, like this is all information, background information, explaining about the tool, giving a lot of recommendations, help articles to be able to actually get more out of GA4 and to actually uh, run these checks uh, in the future better because you are um, collecting better data after seeing this video and also improving your GA4 set. So it's not a one-time thing. You do it like now, today, after making improvements, you want to run a check again, like in, for example, three months or two months from now, again, on the last 30 days collected to see whether your score has improved whether you're collecting more, better, and more accurate data 
that will help you to get more out of uh, out of your website. So yeah, this is really, really in short, um, the order tool, like it runs pretty quickly and you need to take action, of course, after it to be able to get the most out of the tool. Great. Thank you, Paul. Looks super insightful. And I think like a lot of viewers would immediately want to check their GA setup after watching this video, but you said that they would need to wait at least 30 days to run this or what's the uh, suggested time period when they can actually use this? Yeah. So good question. The, the data that is analyzed by this tool is based on the last 30 days. So I suggest to have at least like a GA4 setup running for 30 days and done to run this tool because then you have a, have the minimum, let's say time period of data connected uh, where this tool is based on. Super. And when they run it the first time, you said that they would preferably need to wait for a while, but how often do you recommend that people would do this checkup and, um, yeah, how often in what kind of time spans? I think, um, it's ideal if you run at least like once a quarter to uh, six months. But it depends a bit on uh, your company in a sense that if you make the improvements after three or four months, uh, it doesn't uh, have any meaning to run the order to, in most cases, again, into a three months. So it depends on like how quickly you act on the results that you find. But in general, I see companies using it now, like, uh, within three to six months, a bit like, uh, the same as with the universal order tool of the past. And so do it like between two to four times a year, I would say. Super. Um, any final tips or tricks that you want to share when it comes to audit tool? I think, um, one of, one of the tips that I, uh, can share is that, um, the, the audit tool is, uh, set up in a way that it, uh, gives you, uh, freedom. So this is something we don't uh, talk about today, but what I want to, um, and then to say about that also is that, um, there is a possibility to modify the tool in a way, if you have like experience with supermetrics, to be able to run it uh, for a shorter period of time, a longer period of time, or even to add some triggers. If you have supermetrics and you add some triggers to be able to run it automatically every three or six months, um, so that you are able to, um, to actually do this and automatic get alerts to say like, okay, you're performing this way or that way. So this is a tip for the more advanced users. If you are like a beginning user, um, I would say like, um, accept that your score won't be like in the 80 to 100 range today and try to fix, um, the items that are most easy to fix first. So for example, if you, um, fail on a check number 40, it's called content grouping and you are not aware yet about what content grouping is. I would say, wait with trying to fix that, but focus first on the other things. And in terms of importance, I always say, um, focus the items, focus on the items first that are, um, actually about like the accuracy of the data. So for example, channel tracking is really about like accuracy that you are matching the correct channels. In my opinion, that's more important than setting up additional features like grouping content. And um, so getting your basic data, right, focus on these checks first and then try to expand to the more complex checks. If you have the knowledge you read about how you can do that instead of trying to fix the difficult things first. So there's a lot of low hanging fruit in terms of the data coming into your account and checks that you can resolve instead of like trying to get the most complex things done today. Super. That was a great tip. Um, well, thank you, Paul. Now that we've showed how the online audit tool works and what's the benefit of it. If you want to tr try the audit tool, click the link below this video and you can access it. Thank you, Paul, again, and have a great day. Thank you, Tia. Have a great day as well.